I'm Joshua Bardwell, and uh, this is another in my series of one-on-one -on -one troubleshoots where I reach out to, uh, well, you know, random people on the internet, you know, uh, and uh, get on the, get, give them a little one-on-one -on -one attention to try and answer questions that they, and hopefully you also have. Uh, today, we're with Steve Clayton, and Steve, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself. Hey, I'm Steve Clayton. I live out here in uh, Florida, in Lakeland area, actually. Um, I've been... Messing around with drones, and I say messing around because it hasn't been consistent for about a year now. So I started with a bunch of toys. Um, about six months ago, I decided to try to get more serious with it. So I went out and got a tiny whoop. Um, I built that one using an acro whoop uh, board, and then I bought a King Kong 100Q. And then so I you've been playing around a lot with the smaller ones, yeah? Well, then I got a, um, an Isheen 220. I think you did a thing on that. The wizard. The wizard, but um, I'm so bad at it. <laughs> I picked it up once, and I said, forget it. I'm going to destroy the machine. I better go back and learn a little bit more. Yeah, it really is good to learn on those little ones. Uh, the Flying them is actually not that different from flying the big ones. They're less powerful, and they're slower, but the actual controls are the same, and the stakes are much lower. They crash a lot nicer. Right, right, and if I break it, it's an $80, $80 a unit versus, you know, well, that one wasn't all that expensive, but... Mm -hmm. I don't really want to go lose it. So. Yeah. So you've been flying the little ones, and now you got a, a Wizard X220. Um, so what was the question uh, you you uh, I know you posted a question on my uh, I asked for questions from my patrons, uh, and uh, you posted one, and I thought it was a good question. I I don't I don't remember what it was. So <laughs> what was your question? So for um, I've seen a lot of uh, the PID tuning things, and yours too, right? And it talks about for beginners. But I wanted to change the conversation just a little bit. Maybe talk about pit tuning. What are the basic settings for somebody new into FPV? Yeah. Um, what the experience I have? I'm not good enough to even go into acro yet. I struggle mm -hmm. with it. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm in the horizon mode or whatever that mode is. Yeah, either horizon or angle would be what it would be. Yeah, I think it's an angle. Yeah. Um, so and I've been flying inside the building I'm in. Uh, you know, when they vacate at night, I fly around inside the office. Uh, oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. So it, it, it gives me a little bit of a controlled environment. Um, but what I'm finding is um, every time I try to, you know, I throw on the throttle or I try to turn, it dives. It just nose dives. I have to do it so gently that, um, you know, it's, it, it's like you're crawling. And any time I try to make a turn with a little bit of power, it'll do a nosedive. If I pitch off to the side, it'll nosedive. It, it, um, I don't know what I'm doing wrong, but it's hard to progress when you have, you know, that kind of thing. When you're just crashing all the time. Yeah. 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 Well, there's there's two questions you asked, and actually, I'm, I remember now the first question that you actually posted on the on the Patreon post where I was where I was soliciting questions was what are some good PIDs for a beginner? Right. And now you're now you're, there's a second actually really interesting question that you're asking about why it nosedives and so forth, and I will get to that. But the answer that I wanted to give to your first question, where what are good PIDs for a beginner, is if you install Betaflight or CleanFlight or or Kiss or RaceFlight. The flight control software today has gotten so good mm -hmm. that if you're flying a uh, four inch or five inch or maybe even three inch, any any if you're not flying something really really out there, then the default PIDs actually are are probably going to fly shockingly well. Uh, I've I have you know I'm known for tuning right. I'm uh, that's one of the things I'm known for, and yet these days a lot of the times I'll build a copter and I'll just stick. Beta flight on it, and I'll go fly. And whether it's a two inch or a six inch, the default PIDs, they're not perfect. They could be improved upon, but they fly really freaking good. And I would say if you're a beginner and you're just learning to fly, I, I like to say you should learn to fly before you learn to tune. Yeah. And that's especially true if the defaults are so, I mean, the defaults today are better than the best tuned quad you would ever find three years ago because the hardware's gotten better, the software's gotten better, et cetera. So don't, don't over sweat the tune unless, and this is where we get to your second question, there's something specific that the copter's doing that's getting in your way. If the copter is oscillating like crazy, if it's dropping out of the air, if it's if you're getting these massive bounce backs after flips and rolls and it's getting in your, in your way to, of flying, then we can start to try and solve that problem. But uh, for most people, beginner PIDs 
just use the defaults okay. uh, and, and, and they'll probably be fine. I would say this also, you might be tempted to copy somebody else's PIDs, maybe not you specifically, but somebody out there who's listening uh, and say, well, they got kind of the similar copter to me. Well, all, all these copters are pretty similar, but unless your copter is almost identical, like the exact same parts, the exact same frame, if you have the exact same build as somebody else, then you could probably copy their PIDs. But don't just say, yeah, we both have a five inch copter. I'll try his PIDs. It's not exact. You're better off just sticking with the defaults because they have been uh, tested on lots and lots of different copters and they strike a sort of a broad middle ground whereas this other person's PIDs might be finely tuned for there and even something as small as altitude uh, can make a difference the the, the, the air uh, the air density can make a difference in what your P and your D gain end up when you get to like really to the edge or temperature for example if you live somewhere in, in, in uh, Alaska and it's really cold you may be able to raise your D gains much higher without your motors getting hot because it's really cold out Whereas if you live in Dubai, maybe you won't. So anyway, that's what I would say. So now let's, let's get to your second one. When you say that it, it dives, tell me a little bit more about what it does exactly. Um, when, I, when I head down a hall, if I give it a little too much acceleration, and I have to go very gentle, and it's happening on both quads. It's happening on the King Kong 100Q, and it's happening on my little acro whoop. If I give it just a little bit of an aggressive throttle forward it'll dive down right away now now when you say you 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 go forward do you mean that you raise the throttle or that you pitch forward or or what which specific control are you manipulating it's the throttle i have um the tyrannus plus mm -hmm. so it's the throttle on the right hand side i push it forward what mode do you fly uh, I don't do acro. It's the one where it's the most self-controlled. So, yeah, no, I mean, uh, sorry, that's not what I meant. I meant, I didn't mean mode uh, like angle or acro. You say the throttle's on the right-hand side, but in mode two, the throttle's on the left stick. Oh, well, the well, left, no, I'm, the, I'm confusing it. I throw the pitch forward. There we go. Okay. That, that's what I wanted. That's what I thought. So you're pitching forward to go faster, right? And of course, that's, that's how you go faster. Um, and what happens, uh, so if, what you, what you want to do is you want to think about the vectors of thrust, okay? So if we think about a quadcopter that's hovering, well, I'll use my hand. If we think about a quadcopter that's hovering, all of the thrust is going downwards, right? right. And so, of course, it's hovering and it's not going anywhere. And then when you want to go somewhere, you pitch forward. And some of the thrust goes backwards and some of the thrust is going down. We could, we could think of it as broken down into a horizontal and a vertical component, right? Okay, so this is just trigonometry. Um, well, if you've got a given magnitude of thrust and you pitch forward, some of that thrust is now going horizontally, so you'll start to move forward, and that means less of the thrust is going vertically, right? You only have so many units of thrust, and if you redirect some of that thrust to push you forward, less, less thrust available to lift you up. And what that means is that if you pitch forward without changing your throttle position at all, you're gonna lose altitude. And that I think is what you're describing. So one thing, what you can practice doing is, you can practice, uh, and by the way, I don't think you're doing yourself any favors flying in your office. It's really fun to fly, but it, flying indoors is hard. I, I, it's much easier for me to fly an ultra powerful five inch copter in a big open field than a little two inch, you know, tiny whoop, uh, this tiny whoop's not two inches, but it, it, in my house, there's so many more things to crash into in my house. Um, what you can do is you can practice in, in you know, in an open area or maybe a big conference room or something mm -hmm. and establish a hover and then pitch forward just a little. Don't move the throttle. And what you'll see is that if you pitch forward just a little, the copter will begin to move forward and lose altitude and then raise the throttle without adjusting pitch to reestablish a, a neutral altitude, right? So now you're moving forward and you're not losing or gaining altitude. And as you work that exercise, eventually that'll become a little bit second nature. You'll just adjust the throttle as you see your altitude changing. But uh, you'll, you'll learn that when you pitch forward, you also need to be ready to raise the, the throttle because you're gonna lose altitude. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, I think I've done that too, though. It just, I have to really slam it all the way forward on the throttle in order to get it to yeah. keep from crashing out. That's why I was suspecting it was the PID, but let me play with 
Yeah, I don't I don't think I don't think what you're describing is something that the PIDs are going to affect. I mean, the PIDs are going to affect how abruptly and how smoothly the copter moves. Mm -hmm. But the what you're saying is that you know, if you pitch forward just like 10 degrees, does it just dive or are you like are you really jamming it trying to go fast? Because as you get more and more pitched forward, you'll lose altitude quicker and quicker. Now, um, what I, um, in order to keep it right now from not going from like down, mm -hmm. I have to pitch it really slightly. So mm -hmm. I have to turn the pitch like that, and then I can do it. Even if even if you were a little more, it just dies. even if you were like at full throttle. Um, if I go full throttle, like I throw it all the way forward. Yeah. It'll go down and then it tries to recover and I might get about a half a foot off the floor and it comes back up. Yeah. And when I say full throttle, I mean the left stick, right? Not the yeah. not the not the pitch stick. Yeah. yeah. So so I would say, I mean, it, 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 there's a certain amount of thrust that the copter's capable of making at full throttle. Mm -hmm. And if you think about it, then there is a certain pitch angle. I'll just turn my hand sideways. There's a certain pitch angle, which is the maximum pitch angle you can achieve that prevents you from losing altitude. So for example, imagine that you imagine that you had nothing to crash into in a big open area and you put the throttle to full, okay? So now the copter is climbing like crazy. And now you begin to pitch forward and as you pitch forward, you climb slower and slower, leaving the throttle at full, and eventually you will achieve some forward pitch angle where you are no longer gaining altitude and you're at full throttle. And that that angle will be determined by how much thrust the copter makes. For most, even small copters, you should be able to pitch pretty far forward without having to go to full throttle. You should be able to get pretty close to, well, on many copters, close to 90 degrees, not quite, but if you can't get past, you know, 50 or 60 degrees of pitch without having to go to full throttle, it makes me wonder if the copter is underpowered or if there's something wrong with maybe a motor. Hmm. I, I didn't think of that. I had... You know, I haven't thinking it. I got uh, nineteen thousand on the little micro on the little uh, tiny what? Nineteen thousand. Yeah, that's how they describe it. I don't know what that means. It's like 19, huh. maybe that's the KV. Maybe yeah. it's maybe yeah. it's the KV of the motor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So so that's what I would wonder. I would wonder if if but if multiple copters are doing it, then maybe it's just a question of your ability to adjust the throttle and, and work with the pitch. Um, so it's just more practice time. Okay. Maybe. You could try it in a simulator. Have you tried it in the simulator at all? Yeah. I bought um, a good one, too. Um, Which one did you get? Real Flight. Real Flight. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I don't – I am. I know Real Flight from the fixed-wing world. I haven't – I'm not sure how good its quadcopter simulation is. Does it let you fly FPV, or is it line of sight only? Uh, you can switch between um, okay. FPV line of sight. You can trail behind it. Yeah. Oh, nice. Nice. Yeah, you can trail behind it. There's lots of different courses that they've added. I do you for it because I, uh, a bunch of the guys at work that are trying to learn mm -hmm. that one. It's, it's pretty good. Yeah. Do you find that, that it does the same thing in the simulator? No. Okay. But the, the simulators are much bigger. Why? Yeah. You know, yeah. you, you pick from a bunch of different ones. And, sure. Um, I'm able there to fly in acro mode. Okay. But when I try it here, <clears throat> well, that's the experience I get is I'm, I'm taking dives when I mm -hmm. put the thrust forward or even when I um, pitch. Mm -hmm. If I pitch and go forward and try to go around, it'll just dive yeah. down. Another thing I've found is that the smaller copters have a much more sensitive throttle. Uh, I, I'm not sure, but I speculate that they have a much higher thrust to weight ratio. Even though they make a lot less thrust than a big copter, they're also a lot lighter. And yeah. it feels like the throttle on them is really sensitive. I mean, I'm I'm no slouch when it comes to throttle management, but I've had a little bit of trouble managing altitude on the smaller copters. So uh, you might also think about using Throttle Expo. So Throttle Expo, let's, um, let me pull up uh, Betaflight. Let me show you where that is. Hold on. Here we go. Here it is. Here it is. It's in the PID tuning tab. And we've got here two two settings, throttle mid and throttle expo. Oh, and I'll tell you yeah. I'll tell you what those do. Throttle mid is gonna be set to the throttle percentage where the copter hovers. 
So if you find that for a given copter, it hovers at 40% throttle, you would set throttle mid to 0 0.40, okay? And then throttle expo, if I add it, we'll see this is a linear throttle curve here. If I add some expo, uh, you can see it's going to start putting an expo curve on this throttle. Let me just do a big, a big one. So what that's going to do is it's going to, if this is the hover point, right, mm -hmm. it's going to give you more resolution in the throttle around the hover point. Oh, I see. Um, so, you know, down here, right, like if you think about the throttle, this is the throttle when it's all the way down, and this is the throttle when it's all the way up. Well, so you arm, right, and your motors are spinning and your throttle's down here. You're going to immediately raise the throttle to like here and then start to take off, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. So you don't need a ton of resolution down here because, you know, you're not really do doing anything with the throttles down there. That's the idea. The idea is that right around the hover point, you want maximum resolution. And so you can sort of trade some resolution at the bottom and the top of the curve for resolution around the hover point. And, and I normally do not recommend flying with Throttle Expo. Uh, and the reason for that is that uh, the hover point for a copter is not necessarily going to be fixed. For example, if you use a heavier battery or a lighter battery, if you put a GoPro on it one day, but you take the GoPro off it another day, the hover point's going to change somewhat. And I found, and, and especially if you fly multiple copters, the hover point's not going to be the same for all of them. And I found that those things made my muscle memory for you know when I wanted to gain and lose altitude be inconsistent, and I set the uh, I set the the throttle on all my copters to a linear throttle, and then the hover points at a different place. But there's no surprises in the throttle curve. There's no point where suddenly you have you go from having a lot of resolution, a very very soft, and then all of a sudden whoop, it gets really sensitive. But for the micros, like you're talking about flying, I almost think, especially if you're not 100% confident yet work in the throttle, it might be worthwhile to add some expo. So that, the way you would do that is, again, throttle mid would be set to the hover point. Just just get the copter hovering and look down at your Tyrannus and just glance down and see about where the stick is. Is it at 40%, 50%? So that's how you would set that. And then you would add, I would say start by adding maybe 0.20 or 0.30 of expo and see if that helps you maintain altitude a little better while you're while you're flying. I'll try that. Thanks. Mm -hmm. That's a good idea. I didn't. I've never used those. I didn't know what they were. So thank you. Yeah, I try not to talk about Throttle Expo too much because there's a lot of misinformation about it out there on the internet. People who who don't understand what Throttle Mid is, for example, uh, it, or how to use it correctly. And I actually don't think it's a good idea to get into the habit of using it, especially once you get better at flying. You 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 don't need it. So why why you know? But for the micros, I think it might be worth it, especially if you're having the issue you're describing. All right, good. Cool. Great. All right. Great. Well, I hope that's helpful. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Get get back to me and, and let me know how it works out. We'll do. Thanks again. I appreciate okay. it, Joshua. Thanks for taking the call. Too. Awesome. Awesome.